description. So, yeah, we were talking about um, having a website or a portfolio to showcase the projects that you've done. So I'm guessing by now you've already done a lot of the projects, probably nine or ten currently. And there's some, a few projects that I'm sure you've perfected from end to end. And it's, so yeah, like I was telling, uh, like I was saying, um, it's very important for one to have a portfolio that can help them. Uh, in case someone wants to know more about them, they can just come to a portfolio and check out the project, projects that they've done. It's a bit different from a CV in terms of like it's much more comprehensive as opposed to a CV. A CV just highlights some of the skills. Sometimes it doesn't have the links to your projects, but a project is, so yeah, like I was showing you a sample here. So this is Henok, where he comes from, just a small information about him, his GitHub profile, uh, the, the skills that he has in programming ML, and just a small introduction about himself, um, and then the education bit of it. And so education, work experience, and he has um, yeah, work experience, volunteer experience, and then a link to the some of the projects that he has done. Uh, so if you look at this, it's it has a, if you click on it, it has a link, and if you click on it, it can take you to his it can take you to his GitHub uh, profile where he did the whole project. So when an employer is um, when an employer is looking at your profile, he can exactly see, um, yeah, he can exactly see what kind of projects you did and how you implemented them. As you can see, it's much more comprehensive as compared to a CV. So it's always important for one to have a profile like this. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's important for one to have a profile like this just to showcase the best projects that they've done just not only for employer, but even if you want to have like potential partners or people like that, um, yeah, it's always important to have. And this is something that you can always edit with time. So it's not something that you just use for one year. Next year, again, if you add another project, you can always come back and edit this profile and have, um, yeah, so you can come and edit this profile to add, more skills, maybe you've changed paths or you've added more projects, you can always come and add here. So you can see here he has the home, which was here, this page, and then he has the projects, projects page. So this is the second page which showcases his projects that he's done. And pay attention that he's linked every every project to maybe his GitHub. Um, yeah, and if he wrote if he wrote something, I think, yeah, if you wrote a medium blog, also feel free to like this one. So he also attached where he wrote um Yeah, okay, so he also linked um he also added a link to where he documented one or two things about the whole project. So th that is basically what we're going to talk about today for this um, for this careers tutorial. Um, so I know some maybe building the regular projects uh, on a regular website can be very tasking at times. And that's why today we're going to just show you an easier way to do it because I know, yeah, you might be okay with building a website. You might not be okay with it. That's up to you really. But if you want a very simple way that you can just sit in less than an hour and create a profile for yourself that covers everything, it's always suggested that you use um, or we suggest that you can use Google Sites. It's one of the, yeah, one of the easiest way to do it. And we're going to go through. Um, so just to the show of hands, how many have, have how many have how many have worked with Google Sites before? 
anyone show hands materials okay yeah that's and jobs okay um so yeah if uh so yeah aside from just working with google sites um there's also like a that we in this exercise of how exactly to structure your wording what's what are the keywords that need to be there on maybe when you're thinking you buy about me what exactly just a, some guidelines to show you exactly um yeah a guideline just to show you what kind of content how you should structure your your, your profile and everything um so yeah i think we've covered why you need to create a portfolio it could be for your potential employers and it can also showcase your technical skills and expertise and it also provides an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to accomplish some certain types of works and it's also like a professional brand or a professional image um yeah so the talent pool is always very competitive so if you yeah it's if you have a portfolio i think that always makes you stand out more as compared to others um okay so you guys can hear me well right it's just a thumbs up okay thank you uh so yeah i think we've also covered what is a project portfolio i've shown you a sample of one um if you joined late i think you can find there's some links to the profile on the careers exercise so yeah i think we've covered what a portfolio is it basically showcases it's more comprehensive than a cv and showcases your projects and you can have this for the rest of your life just keep keeping on editing or adding more details and removing others that are irrelevant so the whole goal of creating this personal uh, website or portfolio is basically to set yourself so you you're skilled at maybe fintech and you're good at coding and you want to that's your brand that's more like consultants service if you're not going to work it's more like consulting your service and it's something if maybe you guys have like upwork or freelancer accounts it's something that you can link also to the freelance account and yeah it's going to increase or boost your chances of being seen uh, as someone or serious uh, you don't have to worry about projects because i know you've done 10 projects so far so i'm guessing you have one two three or four projects that you're very confident in that you can already showcase if not it's something that you can still keep improving and practicing um so yeah so we've, we've talked about how you're building your career as a brand yourself just to create a, an impression to uh to others or anyone who sees you so um the one of the importance or the yeah one of the good things about using google sites um is because it's very easy to use it's just like editing a template adding the documents uh, your ui has been created for you it's easy to customize you just add links and a small description so yeah don't it's not like building a whole website from scratch so you just edit a template and it's still going to still going to work if you if you're very good at building websites then yeah go ahead and build your own website showing your skills and your strengths and your projects but if you want something that you can just sit for like 30 minutes and create who you are uh google sites is easy for you and it's also free and you can also customize and also share uh share it very easy with um yeah can share it easily with anyone who you want to showcase your projects to even if it's job applications um so the basic steps to google sites i was thinking instead of just taking it through it i could show you um just step by step how to do it 
So let me just go to the site. Um, okay, so now just to start, we're just going to sites.google.com and then yeah, there are different portfolios that you can choose from. Uh, the one I like is called Projects. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, this one. This is my favorite because I, I think it has the right structure for, um, especially for you 10 academy students. So this is a, this is just a template. So here you can write maybe your name. Um, you can edit if you have a logo. You can edit to just upload a picture. Um, you can maybe write Abel's portfolio. Just choose different things and just a small description about yourself. Um, for example, I love I love to make magic. Um, whatever you're going to choose but make sure it's professional um yeah and then you can also change this background picture so you just double click change the image to something that you relate to and then it has these different sections which you can then um, duplicate or delete or maybe section colors so section colors would give you a different uh sections so here you can write uh, and don't worry also about the content that you need to have here i know it can be hard to sit down and structure okay what do i need to have there's a whole guideline for you to do it on the challenge document so this is going to be a very practical um, exercise just to for you to build a portfolio that you can be very proud of after and then here you can maybe put the project you did on one. Have an, you can change the picture, have a really nice picture that showcases something close to the project you did. If you did a visualization that you think it's really cool and attractive, you can put that picture here and then write a small description about what is this project about. So it could be uh, maybe sales prediction is the title. And then here you can just uh, double click it, add a link to, um, you can add a link to maybe your GitHub or Medium. If you feel very confident with your GitHub, put your GitHub link. If you feel more confident with your Medium report, put it, um, but that's the first thing that someone is going to click if they want to see the project you've done. Then write a small description about this. Uh, your, uh, so it could be um, predicting, sales for a pharmaceutical using um so write just a small description about the project so the models you used um what what yeah you you know best exactly how to um write a small description about it but be as detailed as possible but also don't add too much information so you can have your project one project two Oh, and sure you have links here on project mission. You can just edit and write about me. All this content are going to be shown on the document. So you structure it the way you want it, the way, because it's your profile, it's your own thing. So do, just build something that you know you're going to really enjoy and have fun. Um, having uh, having it so if you see some questions here are not used some sections are not useful you can just delete them or you can add more and then you can put the footer here edit your email address so this could be on the first page so if you notice here we have home and then the second page which is history so here is like page one page two page three page four feel free to add or delete these pages I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for the different pages, so you have the first page, which I showed you, and then you have the second page that is 
um, the history and team, so you can feel free to add or delete the pages as best as you like. But for 10 Academy, we advise that the first page you have our homepage, which basically describes you, yourself, your education, your work experience, um, what else, um, just about you and your skills. Uh, you're going to find the guidelines on the document and then have a second page, just two pages are enough, unless you have extra things that you feel would be important to have. Um, also have them there. Uh, so, so yeah, just be the second page should be on projects. So when someone clicks, they can be redirected to your projects that you have done. Um, but yeah, so this is a sample template. Um, yeah, so that's exactly um, just a, small, a rough idea on how to create uh, or set up Google Sites and edit it. Um, so the kind of content to have more comprehensive details is on the is on the technical is on is on the career challenge. Uh, but just to go through this quickly, so the kind of content to have here. Yeah, the top matter, we need to cover up the top matter. We're talking about, um, so we can talk about the top matter, we're talking about this page here. So, this, this section here, you can always edit the background and put, doesn't, don't, you don't need to write an academic profile site, you can write it, feel free to write your own name, or we can get to play with the for you. So yeah, so write a title about what is this. So someone, someone exactly will know if I click this link, I know exactly what to expect in the in the in the whole. Um, so yeah, the next section. So it could be. Uh, yeah. So the next section is name and basic bio. So. Again, more comprehensive details is in the challenge document. But this is basically this section here. So it has the mean, where you come from, your university, your what, what you're studying, and email and then a clickable link to GitHub. And then the next one is the skills, which yeah, which showcases your expertise. And then um, yeah, so expertise is basically what are your best skills? Are your machine learning model, Python, um, uh, yeah, Python, SQL, I don't know, predictive, all those things that you feel you have the skills for. So ensure you have, you understand what kind of skills you're good at by now, and then add in there. And then we have an embarrassment section. So um, if we check on the careers, um, um, do you guys have access to the documents? Oh, sorry, I'm just seeing this. My voice isn't clear. Is it? Has it been in here for, for a while? Or is it still I'm sorry about that. Okay, so if you come here to the careers document or the challenge document, so there's some guidelines on what content to have on the website. So you have the top matter, which is what we showed you. So it just change the background that you name the topic, and then name and basic bio. So it should be very straightforward and make sure the email is clickable. Um, yeah, so make sure the email is clickable. If you don't know how to do this, you can always um, just do a small Google search or um, just pin me on Slack and then um, I'll show you. And then make sure your naming is very consistent between different profiles. So on this profile, on your CV, on GitHub, and also on LinkedIn, this will make it easy for um, for guys who are looking for you, who are trying to hire you to be able to um, 
to recognize the sentences differently is not the only very good for this And like GitHub and then you should also be GitHub and you should also have GitHub. So make sure um, make sure you make all this man Okay, and then on the expertise spectrum, uh, feel free to use the um, the profile that has big shed it's here so here there are examples of what now so feel free to just use them to edit your videos so look at how they've structured it and yeah they can guide you so on the expertise section this is where you uh you write exactly your skills that so make sure they're very relevant and the ones that you're really good at. So on the expertise section, you yeah, so it's make sure the names and keywords are there and get the most relevant. So like we need to draw that you should draw and then about me. So who is who is yeah, sorry. So the first is what can you do well exactly? So you need to listen to what you're good, what you're good at, and then you're very specific. Um, there's a bit of distraction. Can you guys hear me? Um, so yeah, about me is what you're good at, and this is your chance to describe to your technical hiring manager what you can demonstratively do very well. So cover the most important aspects in a very brief way and tie those to your choice of field. So I don't know if it's machine learning or data engineering or fintech. Uh, so yeah, that's for you to know and understand. And then the second one is what do you want to do? And this should be optional. So uh, this is optional. So the first one is to make sure you write a small about me, about yourself, just a small description about yourself. And the second one is optional. So what what type of company do you want to join, or um, yeah, what you want to do in that company? And then the education, which should always. Um, should always start from so it should start maybe from university um going upwards because then you to put your primary school so yeah the name of the university the course the dates and any notable courses or projects and we should also include an academy and yeah so the work experience if you have if you don't have um just feel free to write some small things about some projects you've done, whether passion projects or just things you've taken uh, interest and did research on your own. Um, yeah. And then on the CV, so I remember with Zero, we did something on CV and you had a document that can guide you on how to write a perfect CV. So I want you, since you guys have improved your projects from the point week 10, it's very important that you add those projects onto your CV. So go back to the CV you submitted on week zero and make sure you update it. So it has to be resent with the projects that you've done in this training. So yeah, here's, this link here will take you to the drive that we did the CV challenge and it has a very good description of how to write your CV. Uh, so it should be in PDF. And also make sure you add this CV link on the website. So I'm trying to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you look at this profile that we were looking at for Henoch, 
um, you can see that he here he has added um, a place to download Subi. And if you click, it's going to take you to a drive where he uploaded his CV and you can see how his CV is structured. So he's a machine learning engineer. A brief summary about him. And he has linked the email, he has linked LinkedIn, he has linked GitHub, his blogs on Medium, and also a portfolio that takes you back to where you got the CV. So a small summary of what you're really good at, expertise, and a small background, and yeah, education and work experience, volunteer, and the projects that he has done, and also his skills. Um, so feel free to just study that profile more. It's one of the exemplary pro CVs that we, we had. Uh, yeah, so remember that your CV should be a PDF and should fit into two pages and it should be downloaded by people who are not you. So sometimes you submit uh, work that's um, on a Google Drive link and it's not visible to anyone else but you. So make sure you change that setting to anyone with the link can view because this is you selling yourself to people who you've never met on and can be your potential employers. So you want them to click and be able to see your view. So we try it on you uh, Yeah, and then further tips on CV can be here, but yeah. And then remember it should be error free, consistency of design. Um, yeah. So when so that's CV, make sure your CV is updated. Again, I repeat it should be updated to the projects that you've done. You don't need to write to put all the 10 projects that you've done, but you can just do like four or three that if they need you've worked, you know, you did you did great in them, or if you want to be perfect, those things. Um yeah, so also project summary so when you're adding the projects to yeah when you're adding the projects to the website uh, make sure that you highlight the projects that you've done if you have done other kinds of projects with Fortin Academy feel free to add them as well because it's your work uh, if you don't you can feel free to also add the projects that you've worked on at Ten Academy um so the high quality projects and the format should be compelling and visual so like i said pictures are really great because they make your profile very attractive to and it will make people more curious um so yeah make sure you choose some really nice and cool photos and yeah they should be relevant also to the project itself um yeah, so someone doing a summary of the three projects should see a suite of projects that showcase the level to which you can work and also highlight which projects were done in groups. So always be honest about your contribution. I don't know if you did any group work. Um, but yeah, your description of the project should also uh, should also showcase work you've done in the past that your employer could think are um, so yeah, this is on um, project summary. So on page two, this is where you write your profile. This also this should be under profile section. Sorry. Yeah. So project summary comes on page two. So the three or four projects that you choose, write it under page two on the profiles, on the profile section. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we already said you choose three or four. Um, yeah, there's no need to put all the 10 of them. Um, just do three or four and then, yeah, showcase your cool projects and then publish. So once you have, so we're editing this page. So once you've once you've written once you've edited your projects, so you click this publish blue 
thing here and then um so you publish a name give it you can give it a name uh, so maybe and then you can publish so it's this link here if you share this is a very shareable link that if you publish someone can just um someone can copy and then it's going to give it access to you so you can see that on the editing section versus the final picture looks a bit um they, this one looks a bit more neat so this is the shareable link that you can add and share it you can add it as a link on your cv you can share it to people who want to um who you want to show your projects on so here I, uh, like you saw we had like different so it's very clickable you can see the history uh, the team uh, but remember here you don't need to have so many pages just have a home that's about you and the second run on project. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. So yeah, that's basically it. So here under take action, you can copy this thing and maybe add your GitHub or download my CV here, things like that. Um, so here you should have your, yeah, feel free. And if you still feel like it's not sufficient and you want to edit more, there's always this. This edit view will only show on your side if you're the owner. If you're not the owner, this edit page will not show because they don't have access to edit your page. So if I want to add more things, I come back again, I edit, um, and then I publish again if I click on the link to share. And one other thing, make sure that you have updated the um the site so everyone can see so here who has access so you can write anyone with the link should have access to view uh this page because there's no need of writing something to yourself um so yeah that was basically it so yeah, the key components, all those things, they have been written in detail on the careers challenge. So go through it, take your time, write all the things that need to be there. Um, yeah, the profile sections and also on GitHub. Um, so I don't know if you guys have edited your GitHub page to, um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look at how GitHub should be. Um, yeah. So on GitHub, yeah, so on GitHub, um, uh, you've probably been working on it a lot. You've been pushing code every day. Uh, just to show you an example of how your GitHub page should be. So um one of the good things about um you guys being at an academy is you've been pushing code on a very on a regular basis so it could be daily you're pushing code and it's yeah so the ones with a long-term activity they have an advantage because people can actually see that you've been coding a lot so um yeah so a good example of a github profile is like this one here for Ada. So if you can see it has she has a nice profile picture. She's written she has her full names and what she her experiences are. So she's an email engineer, a geospatial data analyst, and she works with Atlas. Um yeah, where she leaves the links to Twitter and other portfolios. Uh, so on your GitHub, also feel free to add your portfolio so that someone can come back and see which other projects you want to. Or someone who's not technical enough can come back 
and um, you can come and see your project or your portfolio. So on the landing page, um, make sure you turn this um, this thing on so it's, it's viewable for anyone. And yeah, put a small description on um, on each and every project. And um, yeah, you can choose which ones will be on top and the ones that are not. So a good GitHub activity would have, um, I'm sure you know this, but yeah, this part here should be very active, should be a lot of greens. Um, yeah, shows you've been uh, working a lot. So the other thing is um, on the landing page. So the landing page, you should also write, so for example, this is a different example. They have a small, uh, they have a small bio about themselves on the overview. So a small picture, overview, what they do and things they like. ETC. Um, so yeah, this page is more organized and they're short, concise. So yeah, and she also the GitHub activity hey, this page is showing. Um, yeah, feel free to pin the projects you're most proud of. And yeah, as compared to others, have a professional photo recommended. Um, it's yeah, people tend to trust you more with if you have a professional photo there. So make sure you work on your GitHub profile as well and make sure you link it to the uh, portfolio that you're going to share. And then develop a checklist for each individual repo. And yeah, make sure it has a readme. And what the readme should have is about the project, built with which frameworks you used, um, what skills did you need, how do I install this project, um, how is it going to be used, is there a license to it, how do I contact this person with this code, and acknowledgements. So feel free to use this document as a guide to editing your uh, GitHub profiles. Uh, yeah, so things to consider is language and the technology, so make sure it shows, although sometimes you know it shows, and also the repository structure. Um, so yeah, go through this document and just make sure you tick all the checklists. Um, so yeah, a good way to do it is to develop a checklist, make sure it has everything on this document that needs to be there, and then once you update each and every one, you can just click, check, check, check. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free to read through it in detail because there's a lot of information that I haven't gone to, but I know once you go through those documents, you'll be able to really understand um, how to build it. So what you're supposed to deliver for this week's challenge is basically a link to your published portfolio. So if you have time and you're confident that you can build your own website, on code that's up to you but for this exercise we just want you to have a very simple portfolio that just does the job for you so use google sites so once you publish make sure you publish your site and make sure you share um access so you're going to submit the link for that portfolio so the link should have the following sections so the two pages with the first page being Top matter, the name and basic prior expertise or skills. Um, small description about you, your work experience, your CV, GitHub, and the project summary on the second page. So make sure that your CV that you submit on the portfolio is very updated and follow the guidelines that were used on zero to up to, to structure in one in mouth. Um, yeah, also make sure that it has a clickable link from CV and GitHub and yeah, LinkedIn, feel free to add it if you also want. Um, but yeah, it's also advisable to have a LinkedIn link. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's basically it. 
So I think we have a few few weeks to go. One, if not two. Um, I'm not sure. One, two, or three weeks remaining. So um, yeah. So we just want you now that you have done all these projects to have a very easy way of showcasing them to your potential employers. So yeah, that's the goal for all of us. So take your time. Make sure you. It's it's your project. It's your brand that you're building. So make sure it's inviting, enticing, and it has all the necessary details. Uh, yeah, that's that's it for today. Anyone has any question? Uh, thanks, Matthew. Thank you. So if you have no question, um, yeah, uh, just try it out and then um, let us let me know if you encounter any challenge and materials and you guys to do the work. So I'll, I'll work on it in a few. Um, yeah, otherwise have a really great evening and yeah. Enjoy your journey. Bye. Bye.